I got to say this up front. Any time that we contact a manufacturer for parts, after we introduce ourselves, very first thing I say is, we're not looking for free parts. We don't want free parts. A deal is great if you could like get it to us for jobber, awesome, right? But we don't want free stuff. I do this every time. And I did it for a couple of reasons. You know, the first is that it sets us apart from the channels or the shows that are beholden to certain manufacturers to say nothing but good things about their stuff. And because I feel that if I'm doing something that for the viewer, okay, that I should be able to, I should be doing things that are within the viewer's range. So if I get free parts, how can I expect, you know what I mean? It, does that make any sense, right? I'm trying to show you how to do stuff on a budget, how to think, how to get around things, right? If I get free parts, it just kind of dilutes the whole thing. So I always tell them up front, you know, I don't want free parts. A deal is great, if you could swing that, but I don't want free parts. So that said, we did the video the other day about our issue with the rocker arm. So here's the rocker, and you can see where it pushed through. Right? Other than, I mean, the rocker is in, in excellent shape otherwise. Okay. And the push rod just poked right through there. So, I said, all right, well, this, is, this has got to be a fluke thing. You know? Although, I mean, I have damaged rockers like this before. They were under different circumstances. So, let's go back to the thing about trying to keep things where the viewer is able to do it themselves. When we put this engine together, we wanted to keep it with as many stock parts as possible. And that includes the valve train. And we went to the roller because we had a bad flat tap that came in here. We, it, we killed it on the brake in the very first start on the engine. Fine, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Let's put a roller in it. But let's minimize the roller. Let's go as, as, as little as possible um, as far as like lift, as far as like let's keep it hydraulic so that we can keep the stock valve train in there. Uh, we don't want anything too radical so we can keep stock valve springs in here. And that's what they are. So what we have here is stock 340 valve springs. So there's absolutely nothing crazy here. And the cam is only around 550 lift. So there's nothing crazy with lift. And yes, the, the guides have been have been ground down for, I could probably put a 700 lift cam in here and the, and the guides would be fine. Um, the motor will never see the sweet side of like 6,000, 6,200 RPM. So basically, these, these stock rockers should be more than up to the task. So why did this thing break? Well, I swapped out the rocker. When I start this car, this is a loud car, it's got open headers. And when I start this car, it has open headers, it has no choke. So when I start this car, I'm sitting inside of it, generally the hood is closed. And the first start, there's a lot of commotion. You know, the, the exhaust is like loud. I'm sitting in the car. Um, I've got a feather. There's a lot of commotion in the first, let's say, 10 seconds, 15 seconds that the engine is running. So I don't really hear anything unusual. Well, this time I started it from under the hood. And as soon as I started it, I'm hearing a lifter noise. I'm going, tick, 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 and it goes away. And, okay, well, whatever. Engine's running for five, ten minutes. I look, the oil pressure is good. It's up at 50 pounds. Um, everything is fine, but I got a water leak. So I says, all right, so I shut it off, right, and I fix the water leak. Start it back up again, again from under the hood, and there's the lifter noise again. Tick, 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 tick. Where the hell did that come from? So I've got lifters bleeding down. So I, I, I got to see what's going on here. So I take everything apart real quick, pop the intake manifold off. Everything looks normal. But look what I've got over here. So here's, here's a random selection, okay? And they're only on the base circle. So if this one's on the base circle, this one's on the base circle, this one's on the base circle, this one, this one. Okay, now look, look. This lifter bled down. Look at this one. This one really bled down. This one's like almost at the bottom, okay? Here's one. Look, soft. Nobody home, okay? Here's one. I'm pushing on it. 
Okay, and no give. This one didn't bleed down. Why did these lifters bleed down? This one didn't bleed down. I find the same thing on the other side of the engine. Okay, this one here is stiff. Okay, no bleed down. This one here has a little bit of bleed down. That one's, that one's up. This one has no bleed down. This one has no bleed down. This one has a little bit of bleed down. Okay. These are brand new lifters. Now, if I had been building this engine for myself, not for the channel, let's, let's, just, let's just clear this up. If I was building this engine for myself, not for the channel, I would have used a solid roller and I would have used adjustable rockers and like, like my, my Roadrunner engine at home, right? it's all mechanical roller. I don't really like hydraulic rollers, but again, for the channel, for the purpose of this car, we're trying to keep it as cheap and use as many stock parts as possible, and that's why it's got a hydraulic roller in it. But I want to know why brand new hydraulic rollers that I bought paid the same money anybody else would pay, got it from the same source anybody else would get. I want to know why brand new hydraulic rollers, which are not cheap, I want to know why these things bleed down after five minutes. Now, for anybody who's, you know, well, it's, you know, it's a high-performance engine, what do you expect? We, no. Hydraulic lifter has got to hold its cushion. For, if, if, if lifter bleed down was normal, okay, every time you started an engine, it would li you'd have lifter noise. The, it, the, rocker, the lifter's got to hold enough oil for the next start, whether it's in an hour or two hours or a month. The lifter's got to hold sufficient oil to facilitate that next start without bleed down. I have several brand new rollers in here that just bleed down after 10 minutes. There's nobody home. I start the engine, oil pressure comes up, lift and rose goes away, they, and, and the engine doesn't show any signs of having collapsed lifters or not enough lift or anything like that. Don't forget about audible. If like you were deaf, you still wouldn't notice any difference in the way the engine runs. The engine runs perfect but why are these things bleeding down right and and in such a short period of time and what relationship does that bleed down i don't know where to put that rocker what relationship does that bleed down have to do with the rocker you know so i'm thinking to myself you know it's a roller so it's got a pretty aggressive ramp and if this thing every time you start it there's one or two lifters that bleed all the way down this thing is getting poked really hard for the first couple of seconds that the engine is running and especially without a choke, because again, as soon as you start this thing, you got to start feeding the gas and get the RPM up so that it'll idle. So the starts on this car are relatively violent. That should not make any difference. There shouldn't be any slop here. But if you've got, a, let's say, one of these lifters that's bled all the way down, and you fire this thing up, and right away you got to give it gas to get it to like come up and then, and then idle down, and you feather the throttle to keep it running, typical hot rod stuff without a choke. Well, this thing is getting violently punched, and that's probably what caused this. I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee that's what caused this. What's the solution? So, I bought this stuff from the biggest name in the cam industry. Figure out who it is, right? I paid for it. Right? What do you do? What's the situation? I would like to hear from this cam company and see exactly why this situation exists. Do you want me to send you the parts for examination? I'll box them up and send them tomorrow morning. What do you do? Right? This is crazy stuff. I'm tempted to put a set of solids in here and convert it to mechanical rockers. I'd have to get hard chrome rocker arms, uh, rocker shafts. It's like an investment of another probably 700 bucks to do it right. I've changed it from push rods and everything, which I can afford. That's not a problem. But it goes against the spirit of the car. This is supposed to be the every man's build, the junkyard thing that anybody could screw together using very common parts. And that's why everything is carefully kind of engineered and fit together like puzzle pieces to keep it all in that range of like, oh, it's stock. Cam company, giant, huge cam company who took my money. Why are my new lifters bleeding down like flat after five minutes of sitting still? I'm pissed now. I'll see you tomorrow.